Hello friends, this video on respiration in organisms part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have got an idea about what is respiration, let us look at the various types of respiration. So there are broadly two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So what do you think can be aerobic and anaerobic respiration? Let's see what guesses can we make from their names. So if you see aerobic, the term aero, it is something related to air. Aero is air. So this type of respiration happens in presence of air and air contains oxygen. So aerobic respiration will need oxygen. Now you might be thinking that just now some time back I was whenever I was talking about respiration I was only talking about oxidation of food. So of course oxygen is needed but that necessarily doesn't mean that in all organisms that in all places that same type of oxidation takes place. There are examples where we will see that the process of respiration will take place that is uh, energy will be derived from food but oxygen will not be present. So we will look at both types of respiration. So you understood that the uh, example which I was giving you in the previous slide is an example of aerobic respiration because there the organisms needed oxygen in order to oxidize their food to produce energy. So it is a, a common type of respiration and it takes place one common example is human beings. So this shows that it is not always necessary that organisms re respire only with oxygen. So they can also undergo respiration in absence of oxygen and that is what is known as anaerobic respiration. So it takes place in absence of oxygen. So what happens in this case? This Again, this type of respiration happens in two types of organisms. Now, there are some organisms which can undergo respiration only in absence of oxygen. Whereas, there are some organisms which can undergo respiration both in presence as well as absence of oxygen. So, let us say what do we call them. So, facultative anaerobes, anaerobes because they undergo anaerobic respiration. They can undergo respiration in absence of oxygen. So, facultative anaerobes and obligate anaerobes. So, facultative anaerobes are capable of growing both in presence of and absence of oxygen. So, they can undergo respiration in presence of oxygen as well as in absence of oxygen. Now, since they also undergo it in absence of oxygen, so they are categorized as anaerobes and they are called facultative anaerobes. Whereas obligate anaerobes, you know, one such example of facultative anaerobe is E. coli. E. coli is a bacteria. So this type of bacteria, they can undergo respiration in both presence and absence of oxygen. So let us uh, look at the obligate anaerobes. Now they are capable of growing only in absence of oxygen. So in presence of oxygen, they will not be able to undergo respiration. Now if an organism is not able to undergo respiration, what do you think will happen? Now respiration is the process where food is being converted into energy. Now when I say I am not talking about food in its complex form, I am talking about the assimilated simplest food molecules. They are basically getting converted to energy and without energy the organism will not be able to do anything. So basically if an organism is not able to undergo respiration, the organism will not be able to produce energy within its body. And if there is no energy, the organism will not be able to survive. So these obligate anaerobes, for these organisms, they need an environment where there is no oxygen. Only then they will be able to undergo respiration. So example of obligate anaerobes are Clostridium titani. This is also a bacteria and it is more popular for causing a disease called titanus. So let us now see what exactly happens during aerobic respiration. Now as I mentioned before aerobic respiration means it will happen in presence of air, in presence of oxygen. <laughs> so what happens during this? Now what is respiration? Now I am reiterating the same thing over and again because it should never get out of your mind that what respiration is because now we are going to talk about all the details about it, right? So 
as i said in respiration the assimilated food which is say in the form of glucose this will get oxidized and this oxidation will happen in presence of oxygen and then what happens so let's see so glucose is c6h12o6 this will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide water and energy so this energy is stored in the form of atp molecules and these are utilized as and when needed by the cells of our body so this type of respiration is a very common type of respiration which happens in most of the organisms including human beings now here what happens is complete breakdown of glucose takes place to form carbon dioxide and water so these are like the final products of respiration so glucose has been completely broken down into the simplest forms possible to give the simplest possible products so during aerobic respiration complete breakdown of glucose takes place so complete breakdown is another important thing that happens only during aerobic respiration and not during anaerobic respiration thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again